So last time, did, is that, let's get this over with? All right. I don't know that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, last time we were talking about functions. Specifically, we talked about inverse functions. That's what you did your homework on. Did you guys do okay on your homework? Yep. Yeah. Switching x and y, right? You remember how to do that? Because we're going to look at that in just a, just a little bit. Now, we talked about one specific function towards the end of our day, and that was exponential functions. And the idea was instead of having a variable to a number exponent, like x to the second, x to the third, we now have a number, which is a base, raised to a variable, which is our, our, our exponent in this case. So we have these things as our exponential functions, like 4 to the x, or 1 third to the x, or 3 halves to the x, or 2 to the x plus 3, or 1 third to the x, plus, x minus 2. Those are all exponentials because we have a number base, and then our, our exponent actually has a variable in it, and that's, that's interesting. Now, we did talk about two things. We either have one of two shapes of graphs for our exponentials. It either goes, or, do you remember talking about that last time? It's one of these sweeping curves that grows really quickly or declines really quickly and then flattens out. That's our two types of exponentials. I need you to be able to tell me which one of these, each of these would look most like. Now, of course, this is just kind of a generic thing, saying if our base, which is our B, is greater than 1, we've got this basic shape. If our base is less than 1, we have this basic shape. Notice how, in each case, we go to the point 0, 1, and we go to the point 0, 1. Do you remember why that is? Do you remember why that is? Or, or in other words, let me remind you of this. What would happen if I, plugged in, if I plugged in 0 here, and here, and here? In every case, what am I going to get? What's anything to the 0 power, folks? That's why we're always going to get the point 0, 1, unless we shift these around. Are you with me on that? So we can go through zero one. That's why we have that point, that point. Now let's go ahead and refresh your memory on this. Let's call this graph number one and graph number two. Can you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what graph does this one look most like? One or two? One. one. Why one? Greater than one. So this four, that, that's saying, oh yeah, that's our base, right? If it's bigger than one, it's going to be climbing like that. This is most like graph number one. Now somebody else hasn't spoken yet today. How about this one, one third to the x? One third to the x. Is that most like graph number one or graph number two and y? Number two, why? Good, that's a fraction. It is a fraction, sure, but it's a fraction less than one. So this would most look like number number two. It's gonna go just like that. We studied y last time. How about this one? This one can be kind of tricky if you don't really understand why these work. Is this more like graph number one or number two? One. Why not number two? It's a fraction like number number two. It's one and a half. Uh -huh. So this is like one and a half. This is one and a half raised to the x power, not some fraction less than one. This is most like graph number one. The larger the number, the more dramatically that will climb. The smaller the number, the small, the bigger the denominator. In other words, the more dramatically this will fall. How many people feel okay with this so far? Okay, now our last two, I want to show you that just like we did in the last chapter and in chapter 8, we can shift these things around. Let, let's look at this one. Again, is this more like graph number 1 or 2 from over here? What do you think? Yeah, definitely 1 because that's greater than 1. Are you following me? Now, that plus 3 at the end of your graph, that plus 3 at the end of your, your function there, that should equate to some sort of shift. Do you notice how it's not within the function, it's not connected to that x. It's not in the exponent, it's, it's 2 to the x, and then at the very end you have that plus 3. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? That plus 3, do you suppose that shifts it up, down, left, or right? What do you think? Uh -huh. That's up, just like any other shift. This would shift it up. Now here's how you do that. If you normally, if you normally would cross here at this 0, 1, remember how all, they all cross at 0, 1? This is going to shift it up three spots. Where's it going to cross now? 0, 4, yeah, that's going to cross right there. So we would shift our function up three spots because that would be a shift up. It's at the end of your function, that's a shift up or down, depending on whether it's plus or minus. How many people feel okay with, with that one? Yes, no? Do you remember the shifting, how we shift those parabolas up and down, left and right? The, at the very end, that plus 3, that was at the end of your function, we're shifting this up three spots. We're basically taking this one, shifting it up three, three, uh, three units. Now the last one, this g of x equals one third x minus two the x minus two. 
The first thing I need you to understand is which graph it's most like. Would you say this is most like graph number one or graph number two? Yeah, definitely two. Why is it most like graph number two? Okay, great. So you're identifying, you guys sound like you're identifying the shapes pretty, pretty well, yes? So this is definitely like graph number one, B is greater than one. Definitely like graph number two, B is less than one, it's a fraction less than one. Now, this minus two, does it look different than this plus three? This plus three wasn't attached to the exponent, was it? It wasn't within the function, it was after the function. It said you have two to the x, then after you do two to the x, you're going to add three to it. You with me on that? That's a, that's a vertical shift. That's saying you're going to find out what this guy is right there and add three to the height of it. That's shifting it up three spots. This one, on the other hand, says, okay, you're going to subtract two from your x before you even take that to the exponent. You with me on that? That's not a vertical shift. That's a horizontal shift like we've studied before in chapter 8 and chapter 11 again. Now, do you remember, since the, do you guys see that that is within the function? Mm -hmm. That is like, like you're, you have this exponent right here with some parentheses around. That's what that's saying. Do you remember what minus did if it's within the function? Was it left or was it right? Yeah. That was to the right. It, it's like it was the opposite. It's, it's actually slowing down the function. So if it normally started here, remember that we're on this graph. If it normally started here, it's going to start later. It's going to start later. So this was shifted two spots to the, what was it again, left or right? Right. Two spots right. So if we normally cross at 0, 1, check this out. If we normally cross at 0, 1, we're now crossing at 2, 1. Do you see why we're crossing at 2, 1? It's shifting this spot, look at this spot, this whole graph, but we're going to look at that one value, two spots to the right. Two spots. To the right. Are you guys okay with that one? So we'll redraw our graph. It just now has to go. Now we don't know exactly where it crosses the y-axis. We'd have to do some work on that. Plug in zero. Um, you're actually going to get, let's see, a zero, negative two. You're going to get nine. You get nine out of that. So we, we cross up here at nine. But basically, I just want you to understand that we can still shift our graphs around. Uh, is what I want you to get across from this. Okay, not not exactness. I want you to be able to identify what type of graph you should be looking at, and how to shift these things. If it's after the function, again, we're vertical. If we're within the function, of course, we're going to be horizontal, and it's kind of opposite of what you want to think it is. How many people understand our our shifting so far? Do you see the similarity between chapter eight and eleven, and now what we're doing here? It's it's the same stuff's getting repeated, folks. The same stuff. Now, the last thing we have to talk about in this section is how to solve these exponentials. This is going to be kind of interesting. It's kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. Do you like, guys like puzzles? <laughs> then you're going to love this. <laughs> Ready for it? You know you'd be doing puzzles over Christmas break, right? <laughs> sitting there doing now you can do math puzzles before Christmas break. It's even better. I mean, oh, there's no missing jigsaw pieces, you know? You don't have to bend the corner and bite one off to make it fit. This is, this is going to work perfect because it's math. Awesome. Here's the idea of solving these exponentials. Here's the idea. I want you to assume that we have b to the x equals b to the y. So basically, our bases are identical. The bases are the same. Are you with me on this? Firstly, can you see it's an equation? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, we get an equal sign. Great. Can you see the bases are the same? Yeah. If the bases are the same, what do you know about the exponents? And if you can't answer that right now, let me give you a specific example. Let's say 2 to the third equals 2 to the question mark. And you don't know what that is. What's the only possible number that could be to make this equal? Three. Three. If it's 4, you're going to have 8 equals 16, right? If it's 2, you're going to have 8 equals 4. The only thing that this could possibly be to make this equal is also a number 3. Are you with me on that? That's it. That's the only thing it could be. So here's what this says for us in general. If our bases are equal, if our bases are equal, then our exponents absolutely must be equal. Does that make sense to you? If you have this, if this, then it's very nice. If your bases are the same, then your exponents must be equal. That's the only way that's going to work. 
If 2 to the third equals 2 to the I don't know, well, you do know. The only way this can possibly equal is this is also a 3. That's the only way. How many people feel okay with the idea of this? If our bases are the same, our exponents, I didn't get a whole lot of hand raising, so if you have questions right now, it would be a perfect time to ask. Yes? No oh, question? No question. Any questions on that one? Do you get the concept that if the bases are the same, exponents have to be the same? I mean, try plugging in any number besides 3 there and see if they're equal. Are they going to be equal? No. The only way that's, this is 8, right? The only way this is also going to be 8 is if you have 2 to the third. If you have 2 to anything else, it's not going to be 8. You're going to have something different. That's the whole idea. Now, how we're going to use that, how we're going to use that is with problems like this. 2 to the x equals 16. Yo, wait a second. 2 to the x equals 16. I'm trying to solve for x, right? But really, we have no algebraic way to manipulate this, this problem to solve for x. What are you going to do? You're going to divide by 2? Wow, that's not going to work because x is still an exponent, right? You go, well, wait a second. How do I solve for x in this case? We're going to use this fact. So here's your ultimate goal when you're dealing with exponentials. This is it. This is all we have for now. In, in just a while, we'll have something else. But for now, all we have, all we have is the idea that if you can make your bases the same, listen carefully to my words, if you can make your bases the same, then you know for a fact that your exponents are going to be equal. You follow me on that? Mm -hmm. If you can make your bases the same. So our goal is you're going to try to make the bases equal. Make the bases the same. Now, you've got to buy into this fact before you can do this problem. So if you don't buy into this fact, this is not going to work. Do you buy into the fact that if the bases are the same, then the only way these th two things can actually be equal is if the exponents are equal? Do, do you follow that? Okay, if not, this isn't going to work. Okay, if you're like, well, I don't understand that. Well, then you're not going to get this part. So if you don't, if you're like, God, I really don't get it. Do, do you have any questions for me if, if, about that one? Are you guys okay with that? Give me a head nod if you are. That the only way these two things are actually going to be equal, and the bases are the same, is if those exponents are also the same. It has to look identical. You follow me? It's got to be the same thing. Now, so if we're, our goal is to try to make the bases the same, do I have the same bases here right now, the way it is? No. That says 2 to the x, that says 16. Well, what I need to do is somehow make that into a 2. A 2 to some power. Do you follow me? Because mm -hmm. our base over here, that's given. I mean, we can't change that one right now. That's 2, 2 to the x. This one, though, that's 16. Can you write that as a base of 2 to some power? 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4. So if we can translate this thing a little bit, we got 2 to the x equals 2 to the 4. Is that still the same thing as 16? Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. You know why that's awesome? Well, look at the problem. Do you have the same base? Mm -hmm. Right now, we know that if the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal. Do you, do you follow me on that one? So why does it work for us? Well, well shoot, I mean, if you have, if you have this, look, look at this statement, it looks identical to that, except in this case, b is, is two, and your y is four, right? Well, look at the next thing we could do. Essentially, we can drop our bases. Do you see that? If the bases are the same, you can drop your bases. You go, oh, b to the x equals b to the y, that means x equals y. Two to the x equals two to the fourth, that means x equals 4. Are you done? Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah.